Hey, History Hoarder 63 here today. I'm going to be talking about this sword and a little story about it. And it's funny how things shake out sometimes and it takes a long time sometimes to put it, a story together. At least the story you think belongs with an artifact. This sword here I bought at a little estate auction many years ago, probably the early 2000s. And, um, uh, Auctioneer was selling it as the Confederate sword. Now, those of you who know swords, I mean, it's obviously not a Confederate manufactured, Confederate issued sword. Um, it's a circa 1850s, 1840s, 1850s eagle head pommel. This particular type is the eagle on globe. Originally would have had a chain running from this opening down here a little chain guard um very light duty um sword but a uh, type very popular with militia units um nowhere near as popular as the regular eagle head pommel but still these were very popular by um in use by american militia units in the 1840s and 1850s has a metal scabbard again fairly light duty um but it's floral etched, has a nice American Eagle engraved on it, has the typical two ring top with the one ring center band. Um, again, nothing super earth shattering about this. Other than it, oh, well, let me touch back on the blade too real quick. The blade is etched. Um, it's a little hard to see, but it's got your typical floral etching there, and I don't know if you can see this, it's very hard, but it has right in this area here, it does have an American Eagle on it with E Pluribus Unum. On the other side, it has, again, a floral acid etch motif running up on the blade, again, quite faint, but it has the a stack of of war trophies, uh, swords, etc., also etched on it. Again, not super unusual for a sword of the period. Um, what makes this piece kind of cool, and what I'm going to talk about now is supposition, just based on the circumstances around the sword, how I got it, whatever. Um, on the sword, scabbard was an original tag, probably from the mid 20th century. It says from Alice Hudson Hughes, Trenton, New Jersey. And that is the family uh, who were having this auction. Um, for years, I had this sword just sitting around. And I kind of assumed that it was probably affiliated with, you know, this Alice Hudson Hughes probably had an ancestor in the New Jersey militia at some point, And he carried this sword. Um, well, now years later, after doing a lot of research and ended up <laughs> with some good luck actually on the research part, I actually got a little information on Alice Hudson Hughes. And she was born in 1910 in Mercerville, New Jersey, and she passed away in Chesterfield, Virginia, um, in 2004, I think. But she's buried in Trenton, where her family was. Um, again, that doesn't really tell you much about the sword or any Confederate supposed association with the sword but her father her father was born in atlanta georgia um i forget what year i think in the 18 1870s maybe and his father was also born in atlanta georgia again now you're you're getting a little something here because you know atlanta definitely part of the confederacy right there well it turns out that his father, Alice Hudson Hughes's grand great grandfather, was a gentleman by the name of John Steinbeck Wilson, and he was born in 1821 in Augusta, Georgia. Um, he went to school in Augusta, Wrightsboro, and Crawfordsville, Georgia, and in 1846 he got a medical degree from the College of Georgia and opened a practice in Marengo County, Alabama, where he met his wife. He also later practiced in the uh, 1840s in Columbus, Georgia. 
And uh, at the eve of the Civil War, he was practicing medicine in Muskogee County, Georgia. Now, unfortunately, I plead ignorance and I didn't look it up. I don't know where Muskogee County, Georgia is. I'm sure it's a really cool place, but I, I don't know much about it. <laughs> However, once the war started, he enlists as a physician in the Confederate Army. And he's assigned to uh, as acting assistant surgeon at the General Hospital the Confederate General Hospital in Danville, Virginia in 1862, August of 1862. He serves as an assistant surgeon and later promoted to surgeon at various hospitals in Danville and Richmond, Virginia up until, let's see, up until 1864. He is ordered to report uh, for duty as, let's see, I gotta get the date right, you gotta pardon me, I'm just looking at something here real quick, in August of 1864, July of 1864, actually, he is transferred, he travels from Richmond, Virginia, back to Atlanta, Georgia, his home, and he's assigned as surgeon to the 40th Georgia Infantry, uh, Clayton's division at the Division Hospital in Atlanta, Georgia. He serves in this capacity as a surgeon to Fort Georgia at Lovejoy Station, Columbus, Georgia, Jonesboro, Georgia. This is all during Sherman's advance to Atlanta and later on past the march to the sea. Um, in 1864, uh, November 4th, he's actually promoted a surgeon, a full surgeon. Um, in 1865... I guess from the rigors of being out in the field with a regiment, because he's kind of an older guy, he actually asked to resign and is granted in January, late January of 1865, his resignation is accepted. He goes back after the war and he practices medicine again in Atlanta until he passes away in... August, on August 2nd, 1892. Another interesting thing is his wife, Martha, accompanied him up to Richmond. And she actually becomes very famous for helping out and taking care of wounded soldiers and hospitals and all this really neat stuff. They're just a great family. She was an author after the war. He was an author after the war. He wrote a book about Atlanta, its history, really cool stuff. Now, getting back to the association here with this sword is I believe strongly that this may have been the sword carried by John Steinbeck Wilson during the war. And I say that because surgeons were entitled to carry a sword as a sidearm. Their swords would be really light duty along the lines of this because they, their swords weren't for fighting, their swords were for, purely for decoration. The Confederate Army didn't issue any kind of medical service sword. The U.S. Army did in the 1840s, 1850s, um, but the Confederate Army didn't. So if he was looking to get a sword as a, a sidearm, as per regulations, it would totally make sense that he would be able to procure something like this, um, either direct purchase or someone gave it to him. There are pictures of Confederate officers... <coughs> pardon me, of the Civil War period with similar, these 1840-1850 era militia swords. Not every officer got, a, you know, was able to get a regular, you know, battle, battle ready, heavier officer sword or saber. So some of them did carry these lighter swords. And this would make perfect sense for a Confederate assistant surgeon or surgeon to carry. Can't prove it, um, but again, from from where it came from, the family tie and the way it was portrayed at the sale of the family's goods, that it had this sort, it did have a Confederate association. I could find no other relative of hers who was in the militia or anything in the 1840s, 1850s time period. He seems to be the only <clears throat> one of her ancestors that has any military background at all. And again, it fits in nicely with the age of the sword and the style of the sword. So that's it for today. I mean, it, again, this one's a little bit of a mystery, but 
The circumstantial evidence is pretty decent on this being a sword carried by a Confederate surgeon during the Civil War. Anyway, take care. Have a good one. And take another just quick little close-up of the nice ivory grip on that. Anyway, take care. You guys, um, always happy to do these for you. Out.